All right. So thank you everyone for joining us again. I have the pleasure to introduce Mr. Akash Patel, who am I know I know for so long <laughs> before the pandemic. And we've been working together also, you know, our class is connected and I'm really happy to have you today. Um, Akash, he is the founder of the Happy World Foundation, an international nonprofit organization that promotes global citizenship education in schools and communities worldwide. And I had the pleasure to also be part of this and I, I am doing it too. Um, also, Mr. Akash Patel um, is a Spanish and mathematics teacher. I love your session when you explain <laughs> how you got into languages, explaining that, you know, you went from math to languages. So <laughs> that yes, was very Lord. interesting. I loved it so much. So inspirational too, you know, like when we think about language education, how we can connect with other cultures and people through, through, you know, languages. So that's great. The American Council of Teaching uh, Foreign Languages. And so the floor is all yours, Akash. And thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Lorena. And hello, everybody. Hola, bonjour. I don't know what other languages are spoken here, but I'm so happy to be here. So without wasting much time, we're going to dive right into an activity. We're gonna play mystery hangout, okay? So I want you guys, I've gotten three guests, even though, you know, last minute I invited Noemi. I see Noemi is here, Rodrigo is here. So Lorena or Emily, if you guys can make me a co-host, I'm gonna highlight these guys. And then Silvio is on his way. So what I want everybody to think right now, okay? So I want you to think of a mystery person. Imagine that Akasha is a mystery person. You don't know where Akasha is from, Yo soy profesor de español, pero ustedes no saben que, de dónde soy, okay? So you guys don't know where I'm from. You guys don't know where Noemi is from. You guys don't know where Rodrigo or Silvio are from. If you were in a target language classroom, and let's imagine you're in Mr. Patel's English as a second language classroom, <laughs> ESL classroom, and your task is to ask questions in target language to solve the mystery of where this person is from. We're going to use target language that we're learning in Mr. Patel's English class. And we're going to ask questions to solve the mystery of where this person's from. As a good teacher, I would want to model this activity by showing you some really good, high-quality questions. What are some questions I could ask? Hey, what's the currency in your country? What type of food do they eat in your country? Do they drive on the left or on the right? What's a special food item I could order at McDonald's? Or... Let's throw the questions out. Let me see the chat just explode. I want you to come up with questions without asking, hey, are you from XYZ country? No, we're not gonna do that. We wanna ask questions to solicit responses about culture, about food, about ways, uh, way people live, traditions, etc. I love that. Do you have seasons where you live? There's one place that I've been to that doesn't have any seasons, a historical landmark. Uh, a special occasion in March or April. Did you have something special that you celebrated? Very cool. Keep throwing those questions in the chat. I'm going to make these people, uh, I'm going to uh, highlight them. Lorena, I'm still not a co-host. So uh, if yes. you could. Yes. Um, yes. Emily, can you please make a cash a co-host? Because I, I got disconnected for whatever reason. And so somebody else that was here <laughs> was a, a, a co-host. Um, what is his, her last name? Emily Winter Winterbottom. Emily, yes. you're still here. And if not, we're gonna just do it without <laughs> co-host privileges. <laughs> and that's fine too. I'm 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 not gonna complain. We, you know, the COVID has just taught us so, so many amazing things. That one thing is to be flexible, right? And second thing is it's gotten it's taught us to be tech savvy if your grandma and grandpa can start calling you on whatsapp video calling or facebook video calling come on now i see a lot of people smiling can't you be using technology to make these cool connections happen and that's why you know i see folks like miss boyd from oklahoma nodding her head because she's been one of our leading teachers with our, my nonprofit, actually connecting her students with people from all around the globe right miss boyd yeah, she's been doing that work. So thank you for being here, Ms. Boyd, and because you're an example of what everybody in this room, I want you to make it a resolve that by the time you leave this session today, 
you will be equipped with people, humans, real humans like Silvio, Rodrigo, uh, like Noemi, that you can bring into your classroom for a 20 minute of a mystery hangout so that you can connect your classrooms with target language speakers speakers of that language, native speakers from those countries. And plus you get to travel to some of those cool countries with your scholars at no cost, because the nonprofit I created is a database of hundreds of John Lennons who truly believe in a world without borders, who truly believe in a world where we can all coexist. So that's why I wanna model this activity for you because a lot of people would say, oh, gosh, this is rocket science. I can't do this. Hello, it's not rocket science anymore. It's COVID-19, post COVID-19 era. Everybody knows how to use Zoom. So let's do this. I see a lot of questions here. We're gonna go ahead and ask them. Rodrigo, are you ready? Yes, I guess, of course. And Noemi, are you ready? Awesome. You guys are gonna answer the questions in English because we're gonna use English as a target language. So the first question is, uh, do you did you have anything special in your country, a special holiday that you celebrated in March or April? And Alicia, so good to see you. Noemi, do you want to start? Did you have something special? Don't tell them like a holiday, for example, in March or April. Yes, yes, we have. What we was it? Um, Easter. Easter, oh good, we celebrated it too, nice. So guys, imagine <laughs> if you were in an AP classroom, you could have given everybody a Venn diagram and people could be comparing and contrasting. Isn't that cool? Venn diagram is also mathematics. You can teach math through Venn diagram. Spanish is, or, or not Spanish, sorry. Uh, French, Spanish, English language is interdisciplinary. You can teach so many different things. So give them a Venn diagram, be like, hey, we're gonna compare and contrast Noemi's culture and Noemi's country with our country, okay? Good job, Noemi, thank you. Rodrigo, is there any special holiday in March or April? Yeah, uh, as Noemi said, we have Semana Santa. And Semana Santa is a week-long celebration that takes Holy Week. Place. Yeah, the Holy Week. Yeah, that uh, lead up to Easter Sunday. It's typical it falls in March or April. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Well, you know what? In my country, where I was born in March and April, probably one of the days was with the celebration of one of the births of one of our gods. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay. Oh, also, go I want to mention. One. I want to yes. mention the International Book Fair. Ooh, an which, International Book Fair. Yeah, which take place in the main city of our country. I'm not gonna say cool. that. There's another one, Rodrigo, name. in my country where I was born, there's a festival of colors where people splash colors at each other. Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, the difference is that we we normally like share books, we feature book scenes, readings, and other itinerary events. Interesting. All right, so let's let me ask this. Oh, there, Rodrigo is highlighted. Okay, awesome. And then if we can also uh, maybe you know spotlight Noemi, that would be cool. And then if Silvio comes in, you can spotlight him. So guys, the second question is, what's your favorite sport? What's a popular sport that's played in your country? Noemi. Okay, the main sport is um, football, or you can also call it soccer. Rodrigo? Yeah, it's the same. But Soccer it's not the football. sport that you play, right, Rodrigo? You you play sports. Yeah, I play sports. I play currently I play rugby and I play in basketball. But rugby most, and basketball. The, yeah, the most popular sport in my country is the football. Okay. So let me ask you this question. Since you play basketball, basketball in, in the United States and North America is a sport played by really tall people. Are you tall? Uh, I could say that because the normally people here are like 1.65 meters, the medium. So I am 1.85 centimeters. So for my country, I am tall. But if I can go to another country, <laughs> yeah, maybe the circumstances could change a little. So the average <laughs> man in your yeah. country is not as tall as Rodrigo. Interesting, Rodrigo. Rugby and basketball. So in the country where I was born, uh, Rodrigo and Noemi, 
They play cricket. It's a sport that's like, uh, it's like baseball. We have a bat, we have a ball, and it's an English sport. It, it has colonial roots. It came from the British because my country was, you know, once used to be an English colony. So let's ask this question. What's the currency in your country? Ooh, that's my give it away. So let's wait, <laughs> let's wait for that question, okay? Don't, 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 don't tell them what's the currency, okay? Don't tell them. <laughs> what's a popular food in your country? Noemi? Um, we have different. Uh, it depends on the, on the area where we can talk, but mainly um, our food is full of calories and we uh, have um, something similar to a barbecue. Uh, we uh, like eating meat during our weekends when we get together. And also what we Sorry, call- Sorry, Noemi, just a second, okay? Lorena, Silvio is here. If you can spotlight him, he's here. All right, his last name is Silvio, Silvio Lacayo. Okay. Okay, sorry, sorry, Noemi, go ahead. So it's full of calories. It's like American food. <laughs> Our food is also <laughs> full of calories. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, what else? Okay, uh, meat is the main uh, dish um, and and it is prepared uh, similar to the barbecue. And then we have uh, empanadas. Mm -hmm. um, and also uh, milanesas. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, Rodrigo, popular food in your country. I know I, I, I'm yeah. dying to go back to your country. It has some of the best food on earth. Yeah, our scene is known for its diversity and both flavors drawing influence from the country's Indian, Spanish, African, and Asian cultures. Uh, I can mention some dishes like ceviche, lomo saltado, pollo la brasa, which recently was one of the best dishes in the world. Aji de gallina, anticucho, rocoto relleno, and papa la huancaina. Oh my gosh, you gave me I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a little description of my favorite dish here uh -huh. because it's full of protein and as you said i am an athlete and i am a, i play a lot of sports and i need protein uh -huh. and my favorite food is lomo saltado which is a stir fry dish made with beef onions tomatoes and french fries mm -hmm. seasoned with soy sauce and other spices it's really really good it's <laughs> full of oh gosh talking of food it sounds like sylvia is already <laughs> eating sylvia what are you eating <laughs> <laughs> I was eating cookie. <laughs> oh, man, that's not going to help my students in this English class to try to figure out what country you're from. If you're eating cookies, you're probably American. Yes, sir. North American, Canadian, maybe, or maybe Estadounidense, um, uh, United, from United States. Because that's where people eat cookies, right? And by the way, all participants joining us today, please make sure you put yourselves in the shoes of a student that has never traveled. Don't put yourselves in the shoes and put a cap of a global citizen on. Because if you're global citizens like Akash and maybe Noemi and Rodrigo and Silvio who have traveled to other countries, you're gonna find out very soon where these people are from. But to empathize with what our students go through every day that don't have the resources to travel, if they hear the word empanada, some of my students would not even know what empanada is. Okay, so please make sure be mindful of that as you try to figure out where these people are from. I'm going to take maybe two, three more questions and we'll wrap this activity up and then we'll move on to my presentation. So Noemi, Rodrigo and Silvio, what's the currency in your country? And then we're going to go to the colors of your flag. Okay. Uh, the color of my, uh, my flags, uh, my flag is um, uh, light blue and um, white and with um, yellow sun in the center. <laughs> okay. So it's pesos with a yellow sun in the center. Such a popular Probably flag. Sounds like where <laughs> Lorena is from. No, maybe sounds like where Akash is from. 
I forgot. No, 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 me. I forgot. <laughs> but, oh, but oops, in a cautious country, you can't even eat cows. And in Noemi's country, there are more cows than humans. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. No, no, no. We're, the, we're messed up. No. Akash and Noemi can't be from the same country. Can they? <laughs> no. <laughs> so here you go. Uh, what's the currency of your country and what are the colors of your flag? Okay, first, if I say you my my currency, I'm gonna, I will have to say my my country because the name of the currency is the name of the country. The name. Yeah. Oh, don't say the name, but you can just say. Yeah, we use soles. Soles. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> soles. All right. And what Not are the colors moons. of your flag? They don't use. Yeah, they use the <laughs> flag. The flag features are three horizontal stripes, in red, white, and red, with a national coat of, of arms in the center. Okay. Yeah. And Silvio, do we still have Silvio or he left? Maybe his connection dropped. It's okay. Yeah, Silvio actually like... is from a country where they use, forgot what they use in his country. Oh my gosh, that's a difficult one. Uh, in Okay, let's, let's see. Um, they use in his country, Cordobas. Wow. Cordobas, okay. Oh, never heard of that. Cordobas <laughs> is what they use. And by the way, their country is currently going through lots of polit political turmoil like Rodrigo's country. They've went through so many precedents. Uh, Rodrigo's country also eats cuy or guinea pigs. And Silvio's country is a country with almost a dictatorship now. And it's one of the countries that President Biden's administration is allowing people from to enter the United States on humanitarian parole along with Cuba, Ukraine, Venezuela, and other countries. Silvio's country is one of those countries. No, he's not Venezuelan. They use Cordobas, but he's not Venezuelan. So let's start with Noemi. Noemi's is going to be easy. El asado. They eat steak. <laughs> They've got some of the best steak. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> but because that was going to be too of easy. <laughs> inflation, I was in her country and I've realized a lot of people cannot cannot have steak on a day-to-day -day basis. Forget yes, every you're right. day. And it's a sad tragedy. And actually, Noemi, we're going through troubling times in the United States. Inflation is through the roof and teachers with the salaries that they're making. I don't know if teachers can afford to have steak maybe even more than a couple times a month in the United States. So anyways, uh, where is Noemi from? We got uh, lots look. of replies. Noemi, uh, are they right? They're all responding. Yes, yes, yes. 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 They are right. Is, they is are, some they guy named uh, is some guy named Leo Messi from your country? Yes, the best, the best, <laughs> the best in the world, and we are the champions of the world. <laughs> You're the champions, absolutely. Rodrigo, where is Rodrigo from? If he is taller than the normal stereotypical male from his country, plays rugby and basketball, they eat kui, uh, magalis. A lot of people are saying Peru. Oh, you're so wrong. <laughs> just kidding. I don't think you're wrong. If they eat ceviche, no, it's not Ecuador. I just was messing with you guys. He's actually from Peru. You're right. Peru. He's from Peru. <laughs> and where is Silvio from? Even though he disappeared. Where is Silvio from if they use Bolivares? Nicaragua. Oh, not Bolivares, perdón. Uh, Cordobas. Cordobas. Nicaragua. A lot of people are saying Nicaragua in the uh -huh. chat. He's actually Nicaraguan. So good job, everybody. And uh, please uh, go ahead and show some love to Silvio, Rodrigo, and Noemi for their time today. I know Noemi is going to stay on, but Rodrigo might have to go back to his classes or go play rugby and uh, basketball <laughs> for the rest of the day. So let's say thank you to them and show them some love, virtual love, send them thank you. And uh, thank you, you certainly... Akash, for inviting us. It's a pleasure for me. Thank you. And thank, thank you, Rodrigo. You I'll see you soon. Thank Rodrigo, you. you guys, I'm going to give you their Instagram handles and our uh, Instagram handle for the nonprofit when I actually post about them. So you will, uh, you get, you can get to follow them. Okay. So thank you, Rodrigo. Thank you, Noemi. Noemi, you can stay. Rodrigo, you've got classes stuff. Go do your <laughs> thing. Okay. Have fun. Yeah. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you, Rodrigo. Take care. 
Thank All you right. for joining us. So that was so great. Else, good job. Uh, I don't know why, for some reason, I had also invited a person from Senegal because I knew there were some teachers who teach French. So I invited somebody from Senegal, but he didn't show up. It's okay, not a big deal. Three of my people showed up. So, you know, it, it happens. And sometimes you have connection issues. So tell me, come on, what, what were your thoughts about this activity? Because this is going to be the basis of my conversation today with you guys. Uh, Mama is here. He's Senegalese. Oh, Mava. Mava is here. Yes, Mava <laughs> is here. Hey, Mava. <laughs> Bonjour. Hello. Interesting. We didn't have my friend Ibrahima, but we have Mava. And Mava is yes. Senegalese. <laughs> yeah. Senegalese and member of the TESOL Board of Directors. How exciting. How cool nice. is that? Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome, Mava. So do you teach at the college level or the high school level? I teach at the college level and uh, in different institutes in nice. Senegal. Nice. Yeah. Very interesting. That's so nice. And TESOL is an international to... organization. So for you to serve on their board, that's very exciting. Good for you. Yeah, but it's it's my last uh, year now because it's a three-year mandate. It expires nice. this coming year. Just like mine, <laughs> three years yeah, and now. Definitely. Very interesting, very cool, very good too. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that activity. So we're gonna go ahead and get started yes, with my did. talk. If, if the, uh, sure, Mava, uh, you know, we'll chat uh, as soon as we finish with this conversation, we'll okay. all have a conversation. We'll have some Q and A, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And I realize this is in Spanish. I may have to change it to English. Let me quickly change it to English. Okay. So while I do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of background about me. I am not American, as you can tell. <laughs> Maybe I will soon be an American or a U.S. <laughs> citizen, but I'm not a U.S. citizen still. Uh, I am on my path to become a U.S. citizen. And I came to this country in 2009 in the United States when I was only 18 years old. And wow. now I'm, I'm going to be 32 this week. But when I came to this country, guys, the stereotype for Asians... Indians, an Indian man, can you imagine? You can be an engineer, yeah. lawyer, or a doctor, or a disgrace to the family, right? So, <laughs> sorry, but that's the st sad stereotype of Asian Americans. You can be one of those three or a disgrace. So I chose to come to this country on a full scholarship to study nuclear engineering at Iowa State University. That was me and my twin brother when we were 18. That was the stereotype. We came here to study nuclear engineering and we gave that up and we ran off after six months from Iowa and we drove to Oklahoma where we went to a community college, we had lost our scholarship. And then we went to a four year university and I got my degree in teaching mathematics to high school students. And my brother got his degree in, in business. I did, I was very, you know, I, I was not, I spoke four or five different languages when I came to this country, but I was, never thinking I was going to end up teaching Spanish or Portuguese in the United States. And I've got a story to share there. But before I share that story, look at this. This is me in Oklahoma with my cowboy boots, my cowboy hat. And I'm so dark skinned that I would go to the rodeos with full of white people uh, with, that were cowboys in Oklahoma. And they all thought I was the Mexican cowboy because I spoke Spanish and I wore my cowboy boots and my cowboy hat and everybody thought I was the Mexican cowboy. So here I am in Oklahoma with people who are cowboys who don't know where India is on a map. A lot of people did not know where India was on a map. You'd be shocked. I was teaching in very small rural communities, but the, the shock is also that Akash thought when he came to Oklahoma, I'm gonna see cowboys or I'm gonna see uh, teepees with lots and lots of Native American, uh, you know, uh, Native American reservations and teepees, but that's not what I saw, and I was shocked because those were the stereotypes I had, and it's uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On, um, you may have to mute him just very quickly. Okay. So guys, I really had stereotypes of Oklahoma. And one of them was really sad that I would see Native Americans, you know, that Native Americans were actually wiped off by the colonizers. Oklahoma today still is home to over 35 different federally recognized tribes. And the other stereotype I had was I would see cowboys right outside my airplane window. I was going to see cowboys and I didn't see any. So that's brings me to stereotypes. When I was talking to Mava, who's from Senegal, and Akash, who's from India, 
maybe the first time I meet somebody from Senegal, I could look at Mawa and I could have stereotypes of Mawa. Or maybe I don't know anything about Senegal and I could say something that is based on stereotypes of TV. Or maybe Mawa says something to me or Lorena says something to me. Um, and you know, maybe it's rooted in stereotypes. So I thought what better way to dispel those stereotypes than to engage in a conversation. That's what I did. Mawa and I spoke, we, we broke, uh, maybe we're gonna break bread together. We're gonna talk over dinner or lunch. And then we're gonna talk about our countries, our cultures, our languages. And that's what I did with cowboys in Oklahoma. The cowboys in Oklahoma would ask me, Akash, you're from India. I bet you can see elephants in the streets in India. And I would turn around and tell them, uh -uh. depends on how much you have been drinking. Maybe you can see elephants in the streets in India, right? It's like asking somebody from Africa, somebody from Kenya, can you see elephants in your backyard? Yeah, sure, you can, depends on how much you've been drinking. But anyways, I didn't say that to the people. What I'm saying is we can all have stereotypes. Right now in this room, each one of you could have stereotypes of a person from Nicaragua, from Senegal, from India, from Argentina. But you know what's the beauty of the work that we all do? We can talk to each other. We can engage in a dialogue like you spoke to Noemi, to Rodrigo, to Silvio. When you talk to people, you can break down barriers and you can help build bridges. And that's the mission of my work today. I came to this country becoming a math teacher and I started teaching in very small rural communities or villages in the United States. We don't use the term village, but they are towns, very small towns. And I first started teaching children about my experiences working with elephants or working with sea turtles. I taught them how to make elephant poo poo paper, which is, which is actually true. We make paper out of elephant poo poo. Elephants, they don't eat empanadas. They don't eat steak. They don't eat pork. Elephants eat grass and they eat 500 pounds of grass every day. So they poop a lot. You can wash the poop and change it into paper. How sustainable, how beautiful and how cool. So I called the world's largest poo poo paper company in Thailand and I told the guy, hey, I've just started teaching. Can you send me some free paper? And the guy says, I love you. And I love the presentation you created about elephants and their conservation. He sent me a hundred thousand pieces of paper in the mail. My, my garage was full of poo-poo paper and I would take it all across the state to elementary, middle and high schools, distribute it to students and students would just giggle and they would just laugh and they'd be like, oh, this is poo-poo paper, this is so funny. But you know what? They got to learn about Africa. They got to learn about Asia. They got to learn about sustainability. That's how I started my career as a teacher teaching them about poo-poo paper, about elephants, about DNA mapping of elephants to study poaching patterns or teaching them about sea turtles. And then came an idea while I was teaching fourth grade students in a primary school. I was like, what if I invite a Mava, a Lorena, a Manuel, an Aaron, and I start telling them, hey, Mava, I have a French classroom in my school. Can you come and talk to them for 20 minutes? On a video call, Mava says, yeah, sure. I'm free, maybe he's on his couch and he's just talking to the students for 20 minutes in French. Or Lorena, maybe she's in her uh, kitchen making some empanadas and she's showing a group of high school students, hey, look, this is how we make a lasado or this is how we make some empanadas in my country. So that's where the idea was born of creating a database. And I created the Global Connect database, which has over 2000 volunteers today from 150 countries. You guys can simply send us a direct message. DM us and tell us, hey, Akash, I teach Spanish or I teach high school French in South Carolina. And this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, I want somebody from a Fran Francophone country to come talk to my classroom. And we'll make that happen for you. Here are some of my examples. Like students out there with their maps. This was before COVID. They're asking questions to their peers. Uh, as you can see, these two folks from Lesotho, Swaziland, to the left and to the right, folks from Brazil, Argentina, Chile. It's a group of orphans from India. People ask me, Akash, why do you do all of these cross-cultural virtual exchanges? Number one, to inspire empathy. So that, you know, we lack empathy in our planet today. Many people don't see what's happening in Ukraine, or maybe they don't see what's happening in South Sudan or maybe they don't see what's happening in Syria, or they don't see what's happening in other parts of the globe, and they don't understand that how what's happening there could affect us in the United States or in other countries. So to inspire empathy, you have to be able to show your students examples of what's happening around the globe where they can put themselves 
in the shoes of somebody and feel what they are going through. And if you can't inspire empathy, you can't inspire action. Action will only come once students can empathize with what's going on in Antarctica, with climate change maybe, or what's going on in Asia, or what's going on in Russia, what's going on in South America or Africa. Once students empathize, they can start thinking about, oh, what can I do to use my privilege to improve the lives of people in other countries or in other places? If I can improve, at least I can empathize, be empathetic towards the problems of others. OK, so here's my students empathizing because to the right, you can see a classroom in Bangladesh where students work at a sweatshop during the day and during the nighttime they go to school. And during the nighttime, they're video calling my students while it's daytime in the United States because they want to learn about students in the United States. Empathy also because students will ask me questions. Patel, why don't they have anything on their walls? Why are their walls empty? Why do they only have one TV in their classroom? So. We also have a database of authors, of actors, of um, you know, all sorts of professionals. You want somebody who's a scientist? You want somebody who is a geologist? We can find you somebody who can connect your classroom with people around the globe and teach them different things. Example, my students were making fun back in the day about Ebola and Zika. And I was like, you guys are crazy. These diseases are not something that you can be making fun of because people who had Ebola Many doctors and nurses didn't even want to touch them. And you guys are out here in the cafeteria making jokes that somebody has Ebola. It's not something to laugh about. So I brought in social entrepreneurs from Liberia and Brazil so that they could teach these young students about how grave of diseases Ebola and Zika were and how they were affecting the local economies and the countries and the entire fabric of the society. So it's nice for these students to empathize and learn that oh, we were doing, we were, we were messing, we messed up. We shouldn't be joking about these diseases. We also have bilingual folks, folks who speak French and English, Spanish and English. And maybe you have newcomer students that have just come to your country from Haiti, or that just came to this country from Afghanistan or from some other part of the globe. And maybe you want one of our volunteers to talk to them, engage with them um, about something deeply care about, or maybe you just want somebody to read a book to them in two languages. So how does this empathy inspire action? In this experience, my students were talking to the CEO of a large recycling company. And my student, Bella, that you can see in the picture, she said, Mr. CEO, what can I do to help you? Mr. CEO says, uh, Bella, I'm going to send you a box with shipping paid for. Just throw in your gently used clothes and shoes and ship it back to us. A month later, when we shipped it back, the guy calls us back and he's like, Bella, look at your shoes. I'm sending those to refugee kids in Philippines or Alexis, look at your shirt. It's going to kids in South Sudan or in Syria. And my students, for the first time, they had realized you don't have to be rich to make a difference in someone's life and that we can all make a difference and we can all make this world a better and a happier place for us. Those are students from Kiribati Islands, islands that are going underwater because of global climate change. Very cool opportunity for my students to get to know somebody where these young students had to now move from Kiribati to Fiji forcefully against their will. And the next morning I had a student who drew a picture in her reflection book and she said, Mr. Patel, I think I could share my bed with one of these climate refugees, even though she had no money, but she had the empathy to draw a picture and say, I could share my bed with one of these kids. That gentleman is from Bhutan. The, or anybody know what country is Bhutan located between? It's between two of the world's most populated countries. Anybody want to give it a guess? What are two of the world's most populated countries? Come on now. <laughs> Two of the world's most populated countries, China and Alicia. Is it India you know, and China? Is it India? India? Yeah. Exactly. Yes, Eula. So Bhutan is a That's country a nice in the guess. Himalayan mountain ranges. And it's such an interesting country. This country was the last country to introduce television to their people. And as soon as they introduced television, they had a spike in crime rates. Are you surprised? Wow. This country is also the only country on earth that measures age or gross domestic happiness of their citizens. The king of Bhutan is the one who introduced the World Happiness Day at the United Nations. 
such a neat country for any nationality except for India. If you want to travel to this country, you have to pay $160 to $180 a day to the government to plan your trip. You cannot go on a free tourist visa and just walk around wherever you want. You can't do that unless you're from the country of India. Every other country has to get a special permit to go to this country. But it was so neat for my students to learn economics term, gross domestic happiness. How happy are all the teachers joining today at 5.30 p.m. Central or 6.30 p.m. Eastern? Let's see, after a full day of school, Ms. Boyd is smiling, Loretta is somewhat smiling, maybe she's not so tired, and they're just having fun. So. That's what inspired me to create the Exploring Languages program, that today is students can explore different languages, meet volunteers from different countries, like Ms. Boyd's classroom recently met somebody who speaks Hindi, right? You connected with the classroom. And we have field trip programs, so we can help connect your students with people who can actually walk you around a fire station, or maybe they can walk you around in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, and be like, hey guys, look, I'm in Buenos Aires and I just wanted to give you a quick tour. Or maybe they are right behind a volcano in Costa Rica and they can give you a tour of a volcano. So that's one of our my classrooms talking to their friends in India that just gave them a surprise before the exams and they danced and they said, hey guys, we just wanted to wish you best of luck, the best wishes with your exam. How cool is that? They brought their flags from the United Kingdom, United States and India. That's my Spanish classroom, middle school, uh, high school classroom with a classroom in San Luis Potosí, Mexico. That's my Exploring Languages Global Studies classroom with their friends from Lebanon, with their friends from Spain, with their friends from Palestine. But this is a classroom in Dallas, Texas, with their peers in Medellin, Colombia. Another program we offer to folks in Oklahoma and Texas, this is not something we offer to all teachers. The virtual program is available to any teacher anywhere in the country. At the end of this conversation, when we have our uh, informal conversation, I want you guys to reach out to me and be like, hey, uh, next week on uh, Thursday, can I get somebody who speaks Spanish for my classroom or somebody who speaks French for my classroom? So I'll make that happen. This one's an in-person program. We do not offer it in all 50 states in the United States because we don't have offices and humans in all 50 states. But I hope this inspires you to create something similar in your community. You can go to the local universities and colleges. Every state in America has universities and colleges full of international students. You can bring those international students into your classroom. So they come in, and that's my twin brother, Happy. And that's some of our friends, Camila and Assad from Afghanistan and uh, Brazil, they brought in their food, their culture, their flags, their clothes, they dance with the students, they bring the artifacts, or they brought a soccer ball that they all autographed. And even today, my high, these students have all graduated high school. They still play with that soccer ball. <laughs> it's so funny how a connection made in elementary school went on to high school. And some of my students now have dreams to go to a university and go to Brazil and actually go live uh, an experience of watching a soccer game in Brazil. So how what a neat opportunity that this gift that you're giving to your students through something very simple of connecting them with a human from another part of the globe. You never know when that's gonna pay back. 10 years later, it's gonna come back and be like, hey, I, I helped make that connection possible. So here's some of our folks uh, playing uh, American sports or teaching Amer American students about their sport. Let's talk about DEI. It's a big hot topic right now. So, you know, a lot of contention, lots of animosity, lots of hatred. But DEI, if you really truly believe in diversity and inclusion in today's contentious world, where somebody's willing to kill somebody because they don't like their religion, or somebody's willing to kill somebody because they don't like the way they, the, what politician they voted for, or somebody's willing to kill somebody because they don't like their sexual orientation, or they don't like uh, their, the color of their skin. If you truly want to believe in a world free of conflict and free of all of this nonsense that we watch on TV every single day, you have to learn to be inclusive of everyone, including people you may not agree with or people who may not share the same values. Just think about it in your own classroom. Sometimes you have students who might be atheists, Hindus, Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, Mormons. But as a teacher, you know, when you bring and you know, inspire this culture of inclusivity, where you are honoring 
the identities of all students and their backgrounds. Of course, I'm not saying you want to embrace somebody who's hateful and uh, brings in hate, uh, uh, hateful views. But what I'm saying is when you embrace people for who they are, for example, when I see the beauty in the fact that Lorena is Lorena and her name is Lorena and she speaks Spanish and maybe English with an accent, or maybe Akash does the same with an accent and he's brown skinned and he does certain things. Maybe he doesn't eat cows. Actually, I do. But maybe if I don't or if I did, and Lorena does. And maybe look at Miss Boyd, the color of her skin. Who cares? Or maybe the way she smiles or maybe, hey, uh, Miss Boyd uh, just speaks a different way or dresses a different way. But well, you know what? That's what makes her special. That's what makes her unique. And that's what you guys as teachers need to think about. That social justice today is not about all of us having to think the same. You may look at that number eight. Somebody could say, oh, that's eight. Somebody could say that's infinity. Somebody could say that's a wave. Ooh, a wave or a pretzel. Or somebody could say it's a DNA. So you have to be inclusive of all perspectives because we are all ultimately humans. We think, feel, and believe differently. And that's at the essence of the work of conflict resolution and peace building in our world today. If we can start valuing each other for who we are and see the beauty in our differences and see how much more we have in common than we are different, boom, we're going to save our planet from a third world war or we're going to save our planet from some hate mongers or somebody who's going to go and cause an active shooting somewhere just because they don't like the person or the, uh, the church where they went and shot people because they don't like those people worshiping a different denomination or they went and killed a group of Sikhs and Muslims because they don't practice the same faith as them or they just decided to shoot uh, teachers and students in a school because they had an argument. I mean, come on now, in today's day and age with the deteriorating mental health of humans, I think the work we do as language educators in our classroom is the work of conflict resolution and peace building. It's the work of inspiring the global citizen solutionaries of tomorrow. And it's the work that's going to stop these hate mongers from causing the next world war or hate crimes or racism and xenophobia and all of the negatives that you can think of. Let's think of the beauty of some of this work and celebrate it. We also have a Global Ambassadors Leadership Institute for high school, college students or adults. Information's on our website, it's not relevant right now. But I do professional development, which is what I'm doing with VOSIS today. That today I'm doing something for you so we can all in learn to inspire global citizenship and intercultural understanding. And thanks to all that work, last year, Lorena, I was in Argentina speaking to over 30,000 teachers in Tucumán. Yay! And I've been able to travel all across the globe to train teachers in the same work of global citizenship. And I'm very grateful for that work because then what happens? Teachers send me pictures. Like, hey, Akash, look, we just connected with somebody from Cameroon. Or we just connected with somebody from Argentina or from Chile or from Ecuador or from Spain, from Ghana, from India. So that's what I want. I want the beauty of these smiles from students ultimately when you pair with our folks. Because look at this last person, last picture on the bottom. It says in Spanish, todos somos uno, which means we are all one. That's what I hope we can all inspire together today by the end of our conversation. Hopefully it inspires some of you to be like, hey, I want to volunteer. Like Noemi, I'm going to give 20 minutes of my time. Look, one of my students' grandmother, she got so excited. Every day her grandson would come home and tell her, mom, grandma, 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 today we spoke to somebody from Greenland. Today we spoke to somebody from UK. Today we spoke to somebody from Argentina, from Nicaragua. And grandma says, I want to do this. And look, if a grandma can go teach English to students in Argentina, or if somebody's mom, or also a respected leader, Linda Egnatz, the executive director for Global Seal of Biliteracy, talking to students in Turkey, hey, each one of us has a story to share. And maybe you don't speak other languages, but you can speak English and you can go brighten somebody's life. And maybe you might brighten the life of a child in Senegal or a, the life of a child in some other part of the globe. So if you want to volunteer, I have some opportunities. I actually need somebody this month on a Saturday for one hour for to talk to a group of high school students in Senegal. So if you want to volunteer towards the end, I'm going to give you my contact information. Send me a direct message. So all of that work has been uh, recognized internationally um, by the United Nations. We have raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with a story. Everybody wants to ask me, Akash, how did you learn Spanish? So I told you, I went to school to become a math teacher. But when I was in 
uh, during spring break and summer break in America, we have big vacation. I was like, I want to go get a job, an internship. And all my Hispanic friends laughed at me. They said, Akash, how are you going to get an internship in Central America or South America? You don't speak Spanish. I said, but I have Google Translate. I can use Google Translate. <laughs> use Google Translate. And I sent it to 50 random people that looked like they were professionals from Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic. They almost have thought, who is this crazy Akash sending us a Google translated message on Facebook Messenger? In 2011, I sent it to 50 random people. Nobody responded except for one person, the chief of staff of the first lady of the Dominican Republic. He sends me a message. Señor Patel, la carta que usted me escribió es mal escrita. The letter that you sent me is grammatically incorrect. So I put ja, 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 ja. That's the only Spanish I knew. I said, ja, 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 ja means ha, 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 ha. Of course, it's incorrect. I use Google Translate. The guy says, I love your energy. He says, here's my WhatsApp. Give me a call on WhatsApp. And he fortunately spoke English and Spanish. He says, you know what? I'm going to give you $200, one month of a hotel room, and I'm going to give you an interpreter. I want, you share, I want you to share your energy, your stories, your work with elephants and sea turtles and all these cool travels with students in my country. And I said, of course, $200 and you're going to pay for my hotel? Yay, let's go. So by the end of that trip, the last day, the students from the First Ladies program, they gave me a farewell at the National Music Conservatory and they danced merengue with me. I fell in love with these Hispanics. They were so full of love and especially this Afro-Caribbean culture. They're so full of life and wanted to dance and they were so full of energy. And I was like, when I go home, I'm going to learn this language. So I started backpacking from Mexico down to, you know, Central and South America. And I picked up Spanish. As soon as I graduated with my math, to, uh, become a high school math teacher, I took the Spanish exam and I passed the Spanish test. And I was hired to teach Spanish in Dallas, Texas. In my first year of teaching Spanish with them, I was chosen from 30,000 teachers as one of the top 50 teachers for a million dollar teacher prize. And they flew me to Dubai with Trevor Noah, Hugh Jackman, Priyanka Chopra, the wife of Nick Jonas. And they were all these superstars and like actors and actresses and presidents like President Bill Clinton. And uh, there were uh, President Juan Manuel Santos from Colombia. And I was in Dubai under a palm tree drinking a margarita. And there were two secret service agents looked like Afro-Caribbeans. And they were like, Como tu ta, que lo que mi mano? And I was like, oh my gosh, these guys have got to be Dominicans. So I start talking to them and they're really shocked. They're like, how can this Indian guy speak Dominican Spanish? So I told them, you know what, guys? I learned my Spanish in your country seven years ago with Dr. Margarita Cedeno de Fernandez. She was the then first lady. And they said, no way. She's in Dubai right now. And she's now the vice president of the country. The next morning, in front of 5,000 people, she invites me up on the stage and she hugs me. And she's like, Akash, he was a young man who didn't speak a word of Spanish. And now he teaches Spanish to vulnerable communities in Dallas. She hugged me. And to me, that was my million dollar moment. And then she posted about me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. I didn't win the million dollars. But I got back home. And three weeks later, my only sibling, my only brother, Anand Happy Patel died in a plane crash. He was 26 years old three, while I was giving an exam at the school. When he died, I was devastated. I said, I'm going to take my brother's glasses. Uh, Miss Boyd, he would wear glasses like yours, but he would pop the lenses out of them. He would just pop the lenses out. I was like, how crazy, how lame is that to pop the lenses out? So he's like, you know what, Akash, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, right, that's lame. So I took his glasses and I put them on a globe. And I said, you know what? His name was Happy. So we're going to honor him by creating the Happy World Foundation. And while I was gone for my brother's funeral, the students at my school were so poor themselves, they raised $1,500 to give to my family for the funeral. I said, we're not going to take this money from you guys. We'll give, give gave it back to them. The students refused to take it. And the next Monday, I was back at school. They had packed hundreds of Happy Meals for the homeless. And they said, Mr. Patel, we want to distribute these happy meals to the homeless people in Dallas this weekend. And I was in tears. So they really inspired me to create the nonprofit that today has helped hundreds of thousands of students across this country connect with people around the globe. I created a mentorship program then to help people start their own 501c trees. And as I said, I was invited by presidents like Obama, Bill Clinton, our Nobel Peace Prize winner Juan Manuel Santos from Colombia to talk about how the work I'm doing is 
peace building and conflict resolution. So those are President Laura Chinchila of Costa Rica. She's no longer there now. Sister Rosemary, a CNN hero from uh, Uganda who works with former child soldiers. And the awards just kept coming in from, from Democratic governors, from Republican governors, from presidents, uh, international and uh, national honors, including uh, human rights awards. And then recently I got elected as the vice chairman of the United Nations of the United States. And I just was invited to speak in the United Nations two months ago to the General Assembly, where they asked me to speak about how the work I do in the memory of my dead twin brother is promoting peace and global understanding. So uh, right now my roles are as the president of full. Last year, I left the classroom. Before I left the classroom, the Time Magazine picked me as their 2022 Innovative Teacher of the Year. And now my full-time commitment is to the United Nations, to my brother's nonprofit, and to ACTFL, the American Council on the Teaching of Foreign Languages. So guys, here's my contact information. Please take a screenshot. If somebody wants to help out, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, to talk to a classroom in English for maybe 30 minutes to an hour from Senegal, send me a message. And also send me a message if you want me to pair you and your classes with some of our volunteers. So we're gonna open it up to some Q&A. Is that okay, Lorena? Do we have maybe five minutes? Yeah, we can do it. Okay, so anybody can just unmute yourself and ask the questions. And if you like something I spoke about, if you like Twitter, please tweet it out and uh, tag Voces, tag Actful, tag me. There's my Twitter handle, Speaker Akash. Uh, I... And then, oh, go Fabio. ahead, I see Fabio, Fabio has a question. I've been very excited to watch this uh, amazing webinar. Uh, I got a question, what can I do in order to be a volunteer since I, I have the same feeling that you have uh, since a few years ago, I was trying to make the same uh, project, but I started to work in a mayorship office and I am returning to teaching uh, from a few months ago. So I would like to be a volunteer and I congratulate you for this amazing uh, project and initiative. And where are you from, Fabio? Fabio? Yes. Uh, if I may ask, where are you from? Hey, yes, I'm from Colombia. Ah, mira, parcero, ¿qué parte de Colombia sos? <laughs> I'm from Colombia. I'm from the north coast. That's yes. awesome. That's so cool. And what do you teach? Do you teach? Mava is like, where do you get your energy and enthusiasm? Mava, I now have to live the life of two people, my twin brother and I. So I have doubled the energy, right? <laughs> so lots of trouble, lots of energy, lots of energy. But trust me, I get tired by the end of the day. And Fabio, thank you so much. Uh, if you want to volunteer, you know, I'm just a text message away or a direct message away. The easiest way you guys can request volunteers from our nonprofit, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and send us a direct message. Everybody today has something. And if you don't use social media, send us an email. Okay. But if you use social media like Twitter or Instagram, just use follow us on Twitter or Instagram and uh, send us a message. Thank you so much. I will no problem, Fabio. And thank you. Uh, I think any other questions, any thoughts, comments? I'm going to stop screen sharing so you guys can take a picture of the screen. Uh, that's my, uh, those are all my handles, speaker Akash. That's my work phone. You can text me there that also has WhatsApp. And that's my email or you can reach out to Happy World Inc. on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. Let's look at the chat. Yeah, they say, bravo, thank you, so inspiring. And, and you know, since Noemi is still here, I wanna tell you guys yes. that <laughs> Noemi and I have done a lot of amazing work together. Recently, not yes. so much, but you know, Noemi has been one of our longest standing global ambassadors. She's a university <laughs> professor at the university, uh, private Universidad Católica de Salta in Argentina. And we have helped make hundreds of connections possible. Uh, right, Noemi? Le let me tell you that uh, we are still uh, having that uh, contact. So whenever I need someone, uh, Akash is ready to 
to ask for a volunteer. And thanks to Akash also, I, I could um, present um, for uh, a scholarship uh, at the university. And I was able to travel to Spain, to Valencia. And now I have contacts in Valencia and they are uh, working with the mystery guest activity. Uh, so uh, I really um, keep enjoying what I learned from Akash. He did so well and he inspired my students so well that he still uh, gets in contact to my students as volunteers. And uh, at the same time, they enjoy that so much. So my classes are very meaningful thanks to him. Uh, I appreciate everything you did, Akash, and uh, I admire you and uh, I will try to do my best always to, to be in contact and I'm ready to to help whatever it is needed, okay? No, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Noemi. I appreciate our friendship because see guys, it's so, so simple. Like uh, Noemi and our friendship began through one of a mystery hangout. And today it's, it's I think over a year that we have known each other. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking about how many thousands of students we have impacted <laughs> through one video call <laughs> that Noemi and I had. And so many thousands of students across the United States You're have gotten right. to know Argentina just because Noemi and I met and we decided we were going to move and shake things together. And just last week, Noemi connected with a classroom from Hawaii, right, Noemi? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I yes, um, last week and today. Today also, some people that belong to to the volunteer group, um, Maggie from Chile and um, and. Um, person from Valencia from the university um, she did um, I asked them to to practice that while I was uh, in Spain and they enjoy that experience so much that they are volunteers for ev everyone who would like so very wow. very interesting people yes uh, it's really meaningful and I see Susana from Buenos Aires saying sorry I uh, it's a pity that I couldn't be in this earlier but you know what Susana you have it now. You have the information. Let's exactly. move and shake things for our scholars because they deserve every opportunity. Think about that student in conclusion, guys, who has never traveled, who doesn't have the money to travel, who lives in a place of a lot of hurt and does not know what the next day is going to be for him or her. And if you connect him with somebody from some other part of the globe and brighten his day, who knows tomorrow that same child is going to end up being in Argentina and sending you a selfie and be like, hey, Mr. Patel, or hey, Ms. Greenwell, or hey, Ms. Bauer, I'm here in Argentina. So that's my wish and my hope for all of you tonight. You have my contact information. Please reach out. If there's anything Actful can do for you, if anything I can do for you, if anything Happy World can do for you, if I can get you involved with the United Nations, Let's keep our conversation going. Ms. Boyd knows she has my WhatsApp. We talk many times on WhatsApp. <laughs> so I'm quite responsive. So reach out anytime. And uh, thank you, Voces, for the work that you guys lead in bringing us together. Because I can't imagine what we are going to do together. And I hope exactly. you know, when we create these experiences together, I'm going to send them to Lorena and Erin and be like, Lorena, Erin, look, I met Emma exactly. or I met Magalise or I met Rina. Or I met uh, Miss Boyd has something to say, and that we created this together. So maybe Miss Boyd, you can uh, you can conclude our conversation today with your final thoughts. Oh yes, the what I like most about working with Mr. Patel is uh, when I first met him a couple of years ago. We connected with uh, a school in Mexico, and we call uh, those classmates our sister class. And then at the end of the talk. All of my kids make digital uh, Christmas cards, thanking them and what they like most about. And so I sent all those digital postcards to the teachers and the students really liked it. And uh, he helped me with a young lady who wants to get her syllabi literacy in Hindi. And I am looking for a connection to help another student uh, to want to, she wants to earn her seal in Korean and Palawan. I need another one for Palawan. So if you know anybody, Korean and Palau. Yeah. 
Let's help so, our sister out. <laughs> yeah, and I will get them connected. And I, I ear hustle a little bit. So I'm trying to pick up a little bit of the Hindi. Uh, Humani's teaching me the vowels right now. So I'll try to get that. So yeah, Korean nice. and Palau. That's and exciting, Miss Boyd. I'll try my level best to connect you too, okay? So Thank you. <laughs> anybody else, any Thank other you, questions? Guys. Lorena, do you have something to say to, to conclude our conversation tonight? Yeah, well, I would like, like to say, say something. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Erin. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been listening to, I had a family obligation. And so I've been in the car for the last very bit, small part. But I just want to say that that was so inspiring and so wonderful. Like, you must have so much energy, like you were saying, and your inbox must be so full of so many mess messages from around the world. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time today to speak with us. And, you know, we will definitely be in touch and would love to collaborate more because what you're doing is just awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you, Erin. Thank, thank you, you, Lorena. And I hope everybody has a great evening. Good morning, wherever you guys may be. Thank you, thank Akash. You. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank Have a wonderful you. And thank you, Lorena, thank you. so much. Take thank care. You. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.